Yo, people, yo, people. So Donald Trump recently decided to take a unique campaign approach. He decided to take a shift at McDonald's. And bizarrely enough, this actually went quite well for him. He came across as a wholesome man of the people. And if you don't believe me, just take a look. Georgia, you're an expert at this, huh? Let's go. Thank okay, you. President Trump, so for our first order that's going out the window, we're going to need three medium fries. So would you like to add, put the medium fries in the bag? I think so, yeah. So right, we'll do that. Because so you know who's fries. taking these, right? Mine. Do they ever ask for more salt? Supposing we want some extra salt, can it just go like that? Um, we will give them salt thank you. Watch your supper. <laughs> I, I love salt. Wait a minute, I spilled some. I'm very superstitious. Now it's over the left shoulder now. Let's go. Alright, so we will start from this side. Yeah, then. fine. Okay, put them in standing up, right? Alright. Okay. You're an expert at this, huh? Yes. How long have you done, done this? How long have you been? Um, I've been working with Donald since last. Ten plus, yeah. All different jobs? Yes. She doing a good job? Does an excellent job. She better, right? Does an excellent yeah, job. She's beautiful. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Okay. All right. How many, how many would you put in a bag like this? Like six? You um, six no, five is fine. Five? Five is fine. First order, get three medium fries, and they're waiting for you. Okay, very good. Let's go. Oh, I see. Now I'm going to see that. Oh, that's your customer. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's pretty good. Okay, let's see. I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Thank you. Look at, oh, that. Mr. Look at that. Look at that. How are you? Thank you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Thank you. you made it possible for ordinary people like us to meet uh, you. You're not ordinary. I mean, thank you so you much for everything you do. I can see. We pray for you. Uh, and, you. And you are the type of person we want to be the president. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So nice. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah, I took a bullet. That's right. Thank you, Mr. President. When you think about it, I guess that's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, it's a great franchise. It's a great company. And they've been very, very nice. And, uh, and come on, you know, if, if you look at really what's happening, look at the crowd over there. Look how happy everybody is. They're happy because they want hope. They need hope. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're going to give much more than hope. What is working the fryer telling you about the people of Pennsylvania? Make it back. Mr. President, you actually have worked at McDonald's now. This is, uh, now I have worked at McDonald's. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. Are you going to put this on your resume? I never worked here. Why would she lie about something like that? Will be put on your resume. I worked at McDonald's. Why would she lie about that? Why? Because she's lying, Kamala. That's why. So there you go, there you go. Like I said, it sounds bizarre, but it actually went quite well. And the reason why Donald Trump working at McDonald's went quite well, as opposed to with Kamala Harris, did because she's come across as inauthentic and weird. Right, the reason why it worked for Donald Trump is because he actually connects with working class people in quite a bizarre way. It is, it's bizarre because one of the only attacks against Donald Trump that never really lands, even though it's actually one of the only attacks against Donald Trump that's actually true, is the fact that he's a rich kid, right? He acts like a normal working class guy. In spite of his rich kid background, he can still do this kind of stuff and it looks good. It makes him look honest and relatable, right? I don't think he's ever really lived a working class lifestyle, but he has this capacity and he's had this, not just recently, he's had this since he entered politics and probably even before. This capacity to relate to working class people by just talking like a normal human being. I mean, we can't all pretend like we don't notice this, right? He has the vernacular of a normal working class person. He talks like a normal working class person. Like Democrats, not just Kamala Harris, although she's definitely guilty of this. They talk like automatons. They speak in cliches and slogans and talking points all the time. You can hear the roboticness of when they speak. They don't sound sincere. They don't sound authentic. They don't often sound like they talk to anybody outside of their own circles. Right. And they're really, really insulated. And that's something you would normally assume is a trait of a rich kid, like the guy you see on screen. You would normally assume a rich kid like him would be the insulated one. And we've seen this, right? Working class people relate to Donald Trump a lot more than they relate to Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party. Even when most of the people in the Democratic Party didn't grow up as rich as, as Trump did. I mean, one of the reasons is simply that just that Donald Trump doesn't bow to the PC language. He doesn't bow to the speech dictates that are laid down by the neoliberals, by the Democratic Party, right? He doesn't talk with a politician's filter. And it serves him incredibly well because it helps him to resonate with working class people in a way that the Democratic Party just can't really do. They don't, they don't resonate with him.
blue collar working class people resonate to him not just for this stunt they resonated to him long before but they resonate to him because they see him doing this and they they feel like they're seen and heard they feel like he actually understands them they actually they feel like in the way he talks and the way he acts that he actually understands working class people which tells you a lot not just about donald trump but about the the democratic party the fact that they don't seem to understand in spite of the fact that they claim to represent the working class they don't actually seem to understand the working class in any capacity like in spite of the fact that some of them actually grew up working class in the democratic party they seem to be subsumed in this elitism right they live in this hive mind and this is true of most people on the left they live in this hive mind where all they hear is themselves these echo chambers. Donald Trump doesn't live in an echo chamber because there's not really a place for him to go to have an echo chamber, right? There's no re not really any place on the face of the planet that Donald Trump can go and not get berated. It's not like Donald Trump can turn on the TV and be fed the propaganda that he's spewing out. That's for the Democratic Party. That's what the Democratic Party does. They turn on the TV, they turn on CNN, MSNBC, whatever. They hear their Democratic Party talking points. Then they go and speak to their friends and their friends, because they're all yes men, also feed them their Democratic Party talking points. Donald Trump, because he's a Republican and because he's, I guess, a populist and because he actually cares about the American people and doesn't bow to the speech dictates because he is actually a people's politician, right? He doesn't have these echo chambers because he's a people's politician, because he's not an elitist. He is hated by the elite simply because he talks like somebody in the working class. He has working class tendencies, even though he's not working class. And that's the thing, right? That's why Donald Trump is so popular with working class people, because they can actually kind of relate to him. I mean, to be fair, this actually looked quite wholesome. I'll give him that. Right. But it's not just this stunt. They relate to him because he talks like them. He shares a lot of their views. He doesn't sneer down at them like the Democratic Party does. And that's that's really the, ch the chief appeal of Donald Trump to working class people. That's why this works, because of a lot of the contradictions that are going on here, because of the fact that this is somebody who has a rich kid background, but yet somehow fits in quite well in working class settings because he is like he's a rich kid, but he's got a working class type personality, whereas a lot of the Democrats grew up working class or poor and they have a rich kid mentality they have an elitist mentality and the democrats can't overcome this in spite of their efforts to pander to working class people you know we see that with tax the rich and all the rest right in spite of their efforts to pander right it, it can't be denied right it's become very very obvious since donald trump entered politics that the democratic party has deep disdain and disgust for working class people and if you don't believe me have a look at how msnbc reacted to Donald Trump at McDonald's. Do, can, I mean, if you're on his campaign, and I know you are certainly not, I'm not making any implication of that, but <laughs> what, what is the logic behind this, going to a McDonald's? I mean, we know the guy likes Big Macs and filet of fish and he's used the word love to describe the way he feels about the food there before. But what's this about? Uh, there's no logic to it. It's a stunt. Uh, he has not put forth an economic agenda. Uh, he, as you know, is uh, appears to be not well. Uh, and he's uh, engaged in some really bizarre types of uh, activities during this campaign. So this is just another one of those uh, stunts that he will continue on through the campaign. And I think that we need to really focus on making sure that uh, he is not elected, of course, because he is a threat to our democracy, but also uh, the Harris loss agenda is about uh, the economy, reducing the cost of living, reducing the cost of prescription drugs, reducing the cost of housing and making life better for everyone. And that's what we have to focus on and make sure we get every voter to the polls and make sure that the voters vote for uh, the free future, not taking the country backwards, as you see that what Donald Trump mm -hmm. continues to try to do. So I'm urging and encouraging everyone to get to the polls and vote for uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz to be their next uh, president and vice president. You know, bruh, that analysis is incredible. How are you going to sit there when you see Donald Trump, right, doing a quite a relatable, wholesome video, right, where he's working at a McDonald's? How are you going to sit there and try and plug Kamala Harris in the middle of this while he's working at McDonald's? That's such a like, it's such a bad move. It doesn't work. It comes across as weird. But notice, right, she was asked the question, what, why, why is Donald Trump, you know, why is he what, doing this stunt at McDonald's, right? Why is he doing this? And, you know, she was like, oh, we know he loves a Big Mac, implying that he's a fat ass, right? That was kind of the veiled implication there that it seemed like she was trying to make, right? We know he's a fat ass, you know, who, who loves him a Big Mac and a filet of fish But why is he doing this stunt? And the woman says, well, you know, well, we, we know this is because he's weird and he's mentally unwell, right? First of all, this weird attempt to make out like Donald Trump is mentally unwell is such cope from the people who spent years supporting Joe Biden. But there you go. But notice, notice the conclusion that this Harris-Walds campaigner comes to. 
the only reason Donald Trump would step foot in the McDonald's kitchen is because he's weird and unwell. He has to be unwell. To step to step in the same room as the peasantry? Oh, I mean, imagine the disease, the squalor. Like, it's, it's so out of touch and elitist. And this is the point I was making earlier. These people are such elitists, man. The fact that that's their reaction to Donald Trump at working at McDonald's is so hilarious to me. At least people don't even hear themselves, right? But it's been obvious for a long time that the Democratic Party hates the people you see on screen. Not just Donald Trump, although they hate him too. Trying to make out like he's a threat to democracy while he's wearing a McDonald's apron, right? They, they hate the people surrounding Donald Trump here. They hate the working class. They prefer hedge fund managers, stockbrokers, billionaires, the tech moguls. That's who they prefer. But that's it, right? That's just the media meltdown because they had to melt down, right? They had to somehow come up with a way to pretend like what you're seeing on your screen was one big epic fail. It was bad. It didn't work. They have to because they have TDS and they just cannot take the L, right? This is the thing about the Democratic Party that really hurts them is the fact that they just can't take L's when it comes to Donald Trump. They can't do it. And it's so bad for them. Every single time. I mean, even Cenk Uygur. I saw Cenk Uygur put out a tweet. I massively disagree with Cenk Uygur, obviously. But I saw him put out a tweet recently, and he was like, look, if you don't see that this, this stunt right here is a win for Donald Trump, then you're an idiot. And he was right. It's like, this is a win for Donald Trump. This is a W for Donald Trump for in multiple ways. Right? It's not just because it's relatable to, to working class people, but it's also because it's a shot at Kamala Harris, which is something we'll get into in a moment. But it's like... Cenk is at least honest enough to say, look, this is kind of a W for Trump and an L for Kamala. Democrats cannot admit this. They can't do it. They just can't. They cannot just take the L when it comes to Donald Trump. The most famous and obvious example of this is when Donald Trump, back when he was president many moons ago, called MS-13, you know, the violent gang? He called them animals. And, and Democrats, instead of just agreeing with Donald Trump and saying, yeah, MS-13 are animals, I mean, their motto is, I think, grape torture kill if i'm not mistaken something like that instead of the democratic party just saying yeah yeah these guys are animals they decide to come out and defend ms-13 remember this the same people who've been basically dehumanizing donald trump for the last decade calling him a threat to democracy fascist you know all these pejoratives they seen people came out and defended ms-13 the mainstream media they were defending ms-13 were chastising trump for using this language calling it like xenophobic or anti-immigrant or whatever Nancy Pelosi came out and was talking about how MS-13 are God's children, which I guess is true, but still. Are you really chastising Donald Trump for calling MS-13 a violent gang animals? That's something that they actually did because they have such TDS. They cannot just take the L. They can't do it. But one thing I want to focus on is the bit where Trump calls a lion Kamala. And it's funny, right, because Donald Trump was checked for his supposed lies. In the ABC debate, turns out that all the fact checks were complete shit. And then funnily enough, Kamala Harris got away with lying during the debate frequently. That's actually the point of this. One of the big reasons why this is a W for Trump and an L for Kamala is because it is a shot at Kamala for the lies she told. She lied and claimed she worked at McDonald's. And that, has turned, as it turns out, was not true. Obviously, the media won't be getting to work fact checking her on that. And that's why he called her lying Kamala. Right, and of course, like I said, she lied frequently during the debate. I mean, we heard it when she said she's not going to take guns away, but she's supported mandatory buyback. What would you do about the millions of specifically assault weapons right. that are already in circulation? What do you do about those? Well, there are approximately five million to your point, Craig. We have to have a buyback program and I support a mandatory buyback program. When she said there were no troops in, in active war zones. And of course, we've all seen the video of the troops reacting to that in an active war zone. And as of today, there is not one member of the United States military who is in active duty in a combat zone in any war zone around the world. The first time this Wait, century. what? But let's understand. So where the fuck are we right now? <laughs> <laughs> and she lied about working at McDonald's, right? But she also lied, funnily enough, and this was uncovered recently by Candace Owens, right? She lied about her grandmother's race in her autobiography. So if you look at her autobiography, like all the like 10 people who read it, she, she put a picture of her, supposedly her grandmother, right? An older black woman. I think it was grandmother, not mother. I think it was grandmother. Correct me if I'm wrong. An older black woman saying that, that was a relative of hers. Turns out that that woman was not Kamala Harris's grandmother. Turns out it was a lie. That was Kamala Harris's attempt to lie because she wanted to appeal to black voters. So that she could claim more of a connection to the black community. That was the whole point of that. She lied about that as well. Of course, she'll never be fact-checked. 
by the mainstream media. She's a consistent liar. She's an odious liar. This is turning a lot of black people, especially black men I'm seeing, away from Kamala Harris and towards Donald Trump. I'm seeing an overwhelmingly odd amount of black men in America who are just outright supporting Donald Trump now. In a very weird way, it's very odd to see, but it is refreshing nonetheless. It's also, as you saw in the last clip that I played before MSNBC had their meltdown, right? It's also the immigrants that are funnily enough turning out for Donald Trump, right? You saw that immigrant thanking Donald Trump and praising Donald Trump, right? And and you know, you just know that when the Democratic Party saw that, they were seething. You know they were seething. They were pissed. They were like, how could he? We brought him into this country for a reason. He's supposed to vote Democrat. We changed the demographics of this country for a reason. He's supposed to vote Democrat. What's he doing? Traitor. You know that's how they felt. They were like, how could he vote for Trump? He's a racist xenophobe. Does he not know? And I mean, look, and, and this is the thing, right? If we ever find out that guy got deported, well, you, you know the reason why, right? Like, it's almost as if the whole, you know, he's a racist xenophobe who hates foreigners and hates migrants. And, you know, he's just this evil, terrible human being. Right? It's almost as if these attacks are not landing anymore. They're just not landing. The threat to democracy stick that that woman tried earlier, it just ain't landing. I mean, you heard you heard the guy in, in, the, in the car. She said, you took a bullet for us. And she was thanking him for it. The American people should be thankful, right? He did take a bullet for the American people, but he also took a bullet for the world, right? Because one of the big reasons why Donald Trump is so hated by the elites is because of the fact that he's standing up to the globalist, leftist, neoliberal garbage agenda that is running rife through the West. The suicidal ideology that's destroying us. Donald Trump actually stands against it. And he's one of the few politicians in the world that does. And some people may well theorize that that's one of the reasons why he took a bullet. That's one of the reasons why he's had at least two assassination attempts up to this point. There'll probably be more to come, unfortunately. I pray that that doesn't happen, but it may well. But there you go, there you go. I just thought we'd review Donald Trump's McDonald's visit. And like I said, it went quite well for him. So fair enough to Trump, it was a good idea. And Americans, I can't vote Trump. Obviously, you can probably hear from my accent, I'm from Britain. I can't vote for Donald Trump. Americans, please, vote for Donald Trump. Don't subject your own nation and the entire world to Four years of Kamala lying, Kamala, please don't. Just don't do it, right? It ain't going to go well. You tried it with Joe Biden, it didn't work. You tried it with Kamala Harris, it's going to work even less. Right, so just don't do it. Vote Trump, please. But yeah, let me know what you lot think about this down below. Please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.